Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to take a look into hypertension, its classification, pathophysiology and the drug class used to treat it. So let's get started. So hypertension. Hypertension is nothing but persistent rise in arterial blood pressure. The table below shows you classification of hypertension into normal prehypertensive stage 1 hypertension and stage 2 hypertension based on systolic and diastolic blood pressures. It is said to be normal when the systolic blood pressure is less than 120 mmHg and diastolic is less than 80 mmHg. In prehypertensive, the systolic blood pressure is between 120 to 130 and diastolic is between 80 to 89. In stage 1 hypertension, the systolic blood pressure is 140 to 159 and diastolic blood pressure is 90 to 99. In stage 2 hypertension, the systolic blood pressure is greater than 160 mmHg and diastolic blood pressure is greater than 100 mmHg. When your blood pressure reaches more than 180 by 120 mmHg, it is said to be hypertensive crisis. Hypertensive crisis can be of two types, hypertensive emergency and hypertensive urgency. In hypertensive emergency, extreme blood pressure increase can be noticed with target organ damage. And in hypertensive urgency, blood pressure increases without target organ damage. Now, let's briefly look into the pathophysiology of hypertension. You know that blood pressure is a result of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. In case there is any increase in cardiac output or total peripheral resistance, the blood pressure increases. All the mechanisms causing hypertension fall under three major mechanisms. The first mechanism of hypertension has been described as high output hypertension. Nothing but in this case there is high cardiac output. High output hypertension results from decreased peripheral vascular resistance, concomitant cardiac stimulation by adrenergic hyperactivity, and also altered calcium homeostasis. In second mechanism, the cardiac output is normal and there is an elevation in systemic vascular resistance due to an increase in vasoreactivity. Another and overlapping mechanism is increased salt and water reabsorption by kidney which in turn increases circulating blood volume. As the circulating blood volume increases, there is an increase in blood pressure. This increase in salt and water reabsorption can be better understood if you know the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system Firstly, angiotensinogen. This enzyme is released by liver and this is acted upon by renin to convert into angiotensin 1. This renin is released from juxtaglomerular apparatus when there is a decrease in renal perfusion. This angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin converting enzyme is released from the surface of pulmonary and renal epithelium. Now, this angiotensin 2 has a set of reactions. First, it promotes sympathetic activity. Second, it increases tubular sodium and chloride reabsorption, potassium excretion and water reabsorption, which in turn causes increase in blood volume, which causes rise in blood pressure. Third, it promotes the secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal glands of kidney. Fourth, it causes increased atrial vasoconstriction which also causes increased blood pressure. Fifth, 
it also promotes the release of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior lobes of pituitary glands this antidiuretic hormone acts on the conducting ducts and causes water reabsorption the set of reactions from point 1 to 5 causes water and salt retention which in turn causes increased effective circulating volume this causes an elevation in blood pressure to overcome this increase in blood pressure there is an alternative way the increase in effective circulating volume also causes an increased renal perfusion of juxtaglomerular apparatus which takes us to the first point where the retin is released now let's take a look into the therapy of hypertension as usual the therapy comes in lifestyle modification form and pharmacotherapy form we are not going to discuss about lifestyle modification we are going to take a look into pharmacotherapy so the desired outcome the blood pressure must be less than 140 by 90 mmhg in normal patients in case of diabetes or chronic kidney disease coronary artery disease or non coronary atherosclerosis or any vascular disease the blood pressure must be less than 130 by 80 mmhg in case of uh, left ventricular dysfunction the blood pressure must be less than 120 by 80 mmhg systolic blood pressure is a better predictor of cardiovascular risk than diastolic blood pressure and must be used as primary clinical marker of disease control in hypertension so coming to antihypertensive agents primary antihypertensive agents first the diuretics the diuretics are further divided into thiazides loops potassium sparing and aldosterone antagonists next comes angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and then calcium channel blockers calcium channel blockers are again two types dihydropyridines and non dihydropyridines and next comes beta blockers beta blocker can be cardio selective or non selective or intrinsic sympathomimetic activity or mixed alpha and beta blockers the alternative antihypertensive agents are alpha 1 blockers direct renin inhibitors central alpha 2 agonist peripheral adrenergic antagonist and direct arterial vasodilators the examples of drugs in each class and their dosages are written in a flash card which is available to download in the description down below the algorithm for treatment of hypertension is also written in a flash card and it's also available to download from the link which is in the description down below we will discuss in depth about the mechanism of action of each class of drug in the upcoming videos thanks for watching stay tuned to medboy